We've seen how to get logic to recognize signal from the audio interface through the core audio drivers. Now, how do we actually route that signal into logic's main area and onto tracks? Now, audio tracks are used to play back, record, and edit audio. So let me create one. Now, we have an audio track here, and audio tracks are connected to channel strips. Now, the audio and software instrument tracks that we normally work with in the main window like this are actually routed to channel strip objects in the environment's mixer layer. Now, the channel strips that we see here in the inspector and when we open the mixer at the bottom, these channel strips are actually remote controls for the underlying channel strip objects in the environment. They're kind of like aliases, and they're here for ease of use and workflow because we can get to them really easy as we're working on our arrangements. But really, they're fully configurable in the environment. So let's look at that for a moment. I'm going to go under Window, and I'm going to go Open Environment. And here we have different layers, and what we want to do is go to the mixer layer. Now, this mixer layer looks a little bit like the mixer when we open up a mixer at the bottom of the main area, but it's not. It's different. The first thing I want to draw your attention to is a project setting that affects how these audio objects work in the environment. When we go to project settings under audio, we have automatic management of channel strip objects, and we can enable or disable it. And when it's on like this, You'll see now that when I go under here to create new channel strip objects, audio and instrument are grayed out. And that's because when it's on like this, it means the creation of channel strip objects in the main window creates a corresponding channel strip in the environment here automatically. And it also creates the remote control alias in the mixer and in the inspector. So it handles it all for us. We need to disable this. And then once it's disabled, we'll see that it'll become available here, audio and instrument. Normally, we can leave it on. We don't normally need to create them separately in here, and we're not going to right now, actually. We're going to be dealing with different types of channel strip objects. Input objects are a unique channel strip type that we can create only in the environment, and there it is right there, and they allow you to process and route the signal from the audio hardware right at the input stage here, even before it reaches an audio channel strip. And once it's created, we can monitor it directly in Logic along with any effects plugins, even when logic is stopped. Now, for example, I have a microphone set up into the audio input 8 on my multi-input audio interface. So let's assign it. In the parameters over here, I'm going to click hold, and I'm going to assign this to this one here, input 10, actually, because there's two extra ones on mine. And I'm going to bring it up, and as I bring it up, you'll hear, I'm going to play a shaker, and you'll hear it receive signal in logic. So even though nothing is record enabled and nothing is playing, that input signal is being received in logic. And I can process it with plugins, and that will process the signal before it arrives at an audio channel strip. So for example, if I have an electric guitar in here, I can put in guitar amp processing. And then when I assign this input to my audio track, it'll get recorded with those effects or printed, as it's often referred to. So let's just rename it. I have it selected here, and I'll just call it input 10 here for clarity's sake. And these input objects are then useful for processing audio signal before it's recorded. And they can also be used as live inputs to route external audio sources into the mix within Logic. So if I have, let's say, an external synthesizer that I'm triggering via MIDI, I can connect the audio output of the synth to the input of my audio interface and then have the signal arrive here and be included in a bounce to disk within Logic. So that's one way of getting signal into Logic, and you likely won't need to deal with this. Really, the only advantage for using it now, other than routing in external audio, which there's another way to do, an easier way, which I'm going to get to in a moment. The only real advantage is if you want to record with effects. So let's get rid of this for now, and we'll look at a second way of getting audio into Logic. And we can do that via an aux track, and we can create that here, but we can also create it in the mixer over here. If I go create new auxiliary channel strip, It'll create it there. And here we assign the input over here. I'm going to make this a mono one. We set the format there. And I'll set this to my input, which is 10 that has the microphone hooked up. And as I bring it up, you'll see again that we'll be able to monitor the audio within Logic. Again, even though nothing is playing or nothing is specifically record enabled, this is tapping into the audio stream, but it's after the physical input. Now, if we look back in the environment here, we'll see that there's a new aux that's been created. It's overlapping here. That sometimes happens, but there it is right there. And it's a little bit different here. You assign the input in this field over here, whereas in the inspector and the mixer, it appears at the top of the channel strip. But it's the same thing. So I would think of the 
input object to really be useful when you want to sort of tap into the audio stream before it arrives at any audio or auxiliary in Logic. If you want to process audio before it arrives there. Otherwise, the auxiliary is fine for tapping into the audio stream and bringing it into Logic. So that's the second way. Now, the third way, which we can do directly in the mixer here, is just to assign an input into a regular audio channel strip. And we do it over here. And if I assign my input to be input 10, we can now monitor that audio, but it doesn't work that easily. You'll see if I play my shaker now, we won't be monitoring it through this audio channel strip. You'll hear it because it'll be picked up on my vocal microphone that I'm speaking into. But you'll see that it's not being monitored here on this audio channel strip. And to do that, we need to either record enable or use input monitoring. We'll look at that in another video. But what I want you to take away from this video is there's three ways of getting audio into Logic. We can use an input object where we intercept the audio directly when it comes into Logic and we can process audio there and it'll get printed when we use it as an input on an audio track. The second way is an auxiliary track and that's kind of after the input object. So we can intercept audio at the auxiliary track stage and then we can use that to route it into the audio stream and we can process audio there and any audio tracks that share the input that's being processed on the aux track will be monitored with the effects that are on the aux track. And I'll get into that in another video. It might sound a bit convoluted right now, but we'll get into that. And the third way is to assign an input directly to the audio track. And that's probably the way we'll be working most of the time for day-to-day -day uses. Now, if we go back to the environment, let's look there one more time. I just want to show you that the objects, the audio objects are a little bit more configurable. Now, for example, here we have this assignable button. And when that's enabled, it makes the object available when we look at the reassign menu in the main area here, it'll make it available or it can hide it by turning it off. And here we can reassign. Now, for example, here we see that this is audio one and it's not reassignable, but here I can actually change that object to another audio voice or a different type of channel strip object altogether. And then we can also show or hide EQs, inserts, sends, and IO, and we can do that here in the mixer as well. So that's a little introduction to getting signal into logic. We'll continue with more in the next video.